Um, okay. They said that, uh, uh, yeah, no, better. Yeah. All right. So I, um, oh, yeah. yeah, I want to, now we have uh, uh, almost time, maybe one minute to start. And I have to say that I'm so excited to introduce uh, Mark. Uh, Mark is a senior engineer with more than 20 years of experience. So um, working for uh, doing research in environmental health, uh, urban planning, natural resources, and he has accumulated vast experience as well. And he will present us uh, also another live coding session that, yeah, I just uh, totally convinced that we just uh, blow our minds. So <laughs> thank you, Chris, and welcome. Just the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, if you can, if you were here for the last coding session, then I hope you are ready for some more live coding. Or um, if this is your first live coding, hopefully this will go well. Um, before I even get to a little bit of introduction for myself, I know there's a ton of talks um, today. And so if you're trying to decide what to go to, uh, I wanted to just start off and show what we're going to be building today. Um, this is just like your standard map app with Mapbox. Um, we're doing Leaflet. I mean, we're doing a <laughs> React Map JL. Leaflet was the last talk. Um, and we're going to be adding in some custom components like uh, like layer selections, right? So we can turn things on and off, things that you would need in just about any map application, um, a reset button so that you can figure out where you're going. Um, and so that's what we're going to be, we're doing, going to be getting into here. Um, we're going to be um, doing this all from scratch uh, with React and TypeScript, um, showing component-driven design, as well as how to actually libraries of reusable components. And we're even going to turn those components into web components uh, that you could use in another application where you're not using React. Um, I'm using DeckGL um, for these uh, for these fun visualizations, mainly just because um, we're using React Map JL, which just makes it so easy to add in these things and um, give us something to use for our demo here. Um, React Map GL is a library from Uber originally. It's now part of the VizJL ecosystem, and it's definitely the easiest way to use Mapbox um, in React. Also, because this is Phosphor-G, um, I'll be using the Map Libra um, open source Mapbox fork. I know there's an, at least a couple of talks about that uh, at Phosphor-G. You should definitely check it out. Um, Mapbox is not technically any longer open source. Um, so I'll show how to do use that for a drop-in replacement. Um, I I stopped using Leaflet. I've been using Mapbox for pretty much all of our um, pretty much all of my applications um, recently, and it's mainly because of the support for the fancy tile vectors, um, fancy vector tile layers. Sorry, um, which you can upload to Mapbox or host yourself, or you can generate them right out of Postgres. Um, for instance, here's another project um, that we're in the middle of working on, you know, and it's it's every country in the world, and it's also even every sub-country in the world, and you would never be able to load this as GeoJSON on normal map, and so we just, we love Mapbox for what it enables us to do. Um, so the focus of this talk is going to be specifically on architecting apps. Um, what, what some people might call a micro front end. Um, it's definitely pioneered by Angular. It's been very popularized by React and Vue. Um, where as much as possible, each component of the application is broken off um, into its own chunk. And so here's um, here's some other components, you know, that you would you would develop. Um, and these are their own components in this app too, like a geocoder component or um, Maybe some of these, you know, map layer toggles, or you know, like like we showed a little bit earlier, the um, <clears throat> the, the zoom toggle. Um, the list is obviously endless, and our goal is to you know not recreate the wheel every time we start an application. And so you know, as we, we as we can build up the our own libraries of components, it makes map application development a lot faster. Um, I believe the link for this talk. Um, is in the chat. 
Um, everything that I'm going to be showing is in this GitHub repo. And right here on the side is a link to the live um, code sandbox, um, which is which I showed here just a second ago. Um, this lets you run the entire application um, without actually having to install anything locally. Um, I can't can't say how much I love the code sandbox for sharing apps and you know putting up quick demos and being able to share problems. It makes it so much easier. There's no more like it doesn't work on my machine issues. Um, and this is a, just a sample of the kind of coding we're going to be getting into with React. Okay, if you're staying for the talk. <laughs> Um, here's me. I'm Chris Marks. Um, you can definitely um, look for me after the talk on Twitter at Chris Marks. I work at Zevros Spatial Analysis, as Rosa said. We are a small, <clears throat> we're a small um, consulting agency in New York. We do a ton of spatial analysis and mapping, building these kinds of interactive applications. A lot of data analytics, a lot of statistics, a lot of R, um, besides just doing web stuff. Um, and you can check us out. We're in New York. I currently am not in New York. I'm in Bermuda uh, because of COVID. Everyone went to work from, from home and I decided to move my home to Bermuda for a little while. So I'm actually not in New York. Um, this is the wiki for the, um, for the talk today. Um, pretty much everything, all the links I'm gonna be showing are in here. So you don't need to um, be furiously copying any URLs while we're going. All right, and with that, I'm going to get started. We're gonna start with a clean repo with nothing in it. And we're going to clone it. We're gonna head into our repository, which has nothing in it. And the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a blank React application. Now, React does give you help with this. Um, the React Create React, React app is the default CLI for React. Um, and so creating our application is as simple as running one of these MP, NPX commands, which doesn't even involve downloading anything. And so we'll just create the app. We'll call it deck layers map. I'm going to use um, NPM rather than yarn because I don't see any point using yarn. But we will make sure that we're using TypeScript. Um, this will take a little bit of time. And so while we're waiting for this, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about TypeScript just in general. <clears throat> in the meantime, Chris, can I just uh, pass a question that um, yeah, yeah. Uh, people ask why max box and not open layers? Um, you know, I, I have seen that open layers has um, been advancing lately and they, they do seem to be adding a lot of, of features. Um, I am not an expert on open layers, so I can't necessarily say why you do map box over open layers. Um, when we when we moved away from Leaflet, um, Mapbox seemed to be the the most full featured and um, most performant library, and so that's what we started using, and that's what we've been using for I don't know at least two years or so. Um, I can't actually see people's comments. Uh, should I be able to see people's comments, Rosa? Or is, or will you pass them on to me? I I can pass to you. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'll just look at that in the chat. Yeah. Okay. You can also, um, you can also uh, take a look if you are in Venueless. Right. I don't have that open. So if you want to pass things to me, I will yeah, look I will at pass the, to you. That's the private why I'm here. chat. Yeah. 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 Okay, I will great. pass you in the private chat. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Is this, oops. No, not that. Okay. Let's see. That's still going. All right, I have some time. So I gave a talk like a year or two ago about um, TypeScript and why everyone should be using it. Um, at the time, TypeScript still felt like a sort of risky um, 
migration or move for, for some people, um, but it's only been growing in popularity and um, is, is becoming the de facto for a lot of projects. Um, TypeScript adds um, types, really, it's there's, its main thing is it, 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 is a, um, it is a superset of JavaScript. So all a valid JavaScript is valid TypeScript. Um, and it also adds in um, features from future versions of JavaScript that haven't technically landed, like ES7 and ES8 features. It is a type checker. Um, and it is becoming one of the most loved and most wanted um, languages. And these all these um, graphs and stuff are out of date because it's only gotten better. Um, to show the basics of what adding types means um, while we're waiting for uh, the uh, Create React app to go, we can look at a simple application. Um, here we have something that just says hello world, but it's a, it adds some stuff. And it's going to loop through this array of people. It's really simple. And we add in a little RxJS magic, and now it's updating our app. But you can see that we're passing in strings, numbers, arrays, objects, null, undefined. And JavaScript will do its best to deal with these kinds of things, but it would be a lot better if we had a good way to know what we're, um, what our application is expecting and how, to, how it works. And that is where we um, come into TypeScript. So TypeScript is going to immediately give you errors about these kinds of things. Um, Technically, this will also give you an error if you don't do automatic string concatenation, right? Um, and that's basically what types are all about. It's, it's, it's making sure that what we have in our application um, is doing what we think it's doing. And honestly, working in TypeScript is not, I don't think it's that hard as long as you actually understand the JavaScript language and what, what you're actually doing. If you can tell arrays from objects, then it should be fine. Um, TypeScript gives you the transpiler um, so that you can produce ES5 bundles if you want to. TypeScript is big on Node. Um, a lot of the backend apps are also in TypeScript now. And during this talk, the number one thing that I want to make sure that we show is auto-completion. Um, because TypeScript um, gives you all, all of, gives you essentially files that tell um, like VS Code, like what kind of functions or methods, um, what, what, what parameters to expect. The auto-completion is amazing. You spend a lot less time typing. It makes refactoring possible, like as you would expect with more, um, with more like languages like Java or C Sharp. You can instantly, you know, change the name of a variable everywhere. You get a lot of hints about um, from the documentation automatically, easy access to documentation, quick fixes, and less tests, and it means you're actually developing faster and coding faster. Uh, let me check on, oh, we're done there. Um, I'll end on this slide. Um, that equation at the top says pounds of force does not equal Newtons. This is a famous um, type error story. Um, in, in 1999, the uh, Mars um, satellite crashed into Mars because of a type error in the code. Um, one set of engineers were um, calculating force in terms of pounds. The other was using Newtons. And because there was no type checking between the two, um, they crashed into Mars. <laughs> I just think that's a great way to think about TypeScript. All right. Now that we have our React app, um, we're just going to install the React Map GL dependency. And we're also going to create our first component. I use uh, generators for um, creating components. The, the, um, the React does not give you these by default. Um, but this is a great this is a great one. There are a few others out there. Unfortunately, React doesn't give you as much um, support here the way Angular and Vue does for automatically generating new components and scaffolding out your code. Um, but you can use this to automatically create components. 
Um, we're going to create the, the backdrop map, the map that's behind everything. And uh, while this is going, I, I did not name it map. Um, the people will often run into problems right off the bat. Um, oh, yeah, like me, um, because of little problems like being in the wrong folder. Um, but also little problems like um, naming things map or set or week map or date. Uh, and those are built in classes in JavaScript, so you don't want to use those. Um, we're using TypeScript. We're using CSS modules. That's default for React. I'll just stick to regular CSS for today. We'll generate these in the component library. I will like a style sheet. And uh, I will like a test, but I don't need, I'll take a story, but I don't need it to be lazy loading. <clears throat> is the uh, is the text is the text big enough in the terminal here for people? You can let me know in the chat here. All right, <clears throat> we have our first component, so it's time to open up this app uh, in VS Code. And here we have our deck layers map and some source. And, oh shoot. I think I typed my Y's too quickly. I think this will still work. Let's just rename that components. There we go. OK. That's better. We have a basic backdrop map. <clears throat> We've got um, React GL installed, React map GL installed. And we have our basic React component. Um, before we get too far, we also want to add um, the Map Libra library. I realize that <clears throat> getting these kinds of apps set up from scratch does take a little bit of time, but I figured it would be worth showing because a lot of people get lost just at this point because they can't get their environment set up correctly. Um, it's honestly the biggest stumbling block people um, encounter. All right. Um, so now to add our map, well, let's, let's make sure our application starts. What's this complaining about? I don't know what it's complaining about. OK, great. That is what you get from Create React App off the bat. Now we're going to move to start adding things into our map. Um, we are, we'll take the default code from the um, React Map docs, and we'll stick it into our component. In the latest version of React, um, they have abandoned classes, JavaScript classes, and they now um, tend to, you tend to see everything, all classes defined as functions, um, which I thought I would hate, but it's not so bad. Um, the return for this function is returning JSX. If you're familiar with um, React, then you already know what JSX is. If you're not familiar, um, JSX is essentially um, HTML code, but in your JS file. The default um, name for the React map JL export, um, unfortunately, this won't auto import. But we know that um, the map that you actually get when you import these things is 
an interactive map. So I'm just going to update this name, and that will allow us to, it should allow us to automatically import these things. Sometimes in VS Code, this latest version, the, the very first time you use imports from another library, they don't show up. Um, but if we remove this and now say, hey, import our, import our th things. Oh, it's still not there. Where, where did we go wrong? OK, I'm not sure why it's not working there, but it does seem to be working. Normally, you would see um, some, normally you would see like a, a helper element come up there saying, hey, do you want to import this? Yeah, like this. Um, <clears throat> do you want to import this component from this library? And then you just say, yep, I do. And it's so much faster than, um, so much faster than um, hunting and pecking around for, for libraries. Um, and for imports. OK, so we've got our interactive map. And the other thing we need, we want for this map, since we're using map Libra, um, we're going to need some, C we're going to need the, to follow, keep following these instructions. We're going to need the map box CSS. But we need, um, technically, those, those instructions are already out of date since map Libra updated the names of their um, updated, they updated the names of their CSS files. And so now we actually need to be importing um, a file that has a slightly different name. And honestly, there was nothing really about this until you start Googling around in GitHub and you can figure out that, oh yeah, our app is missing um, the CSS. So we'll add the CSS. And then there's instructions for how to use the map Libra fork. Um, we already installed that dependency, right? Um, and so we just need to make these um, bundler configurations. Now, unfortunately, the helpfulness of the create react, react app is at its end because um, in order to update things like your Webpack configuration, you need to eject the application from Create React App. And for small apps like this, um, that's not too big a deal. Uh, it means that you won't be able to automatically update all your dependencies and get access to all the latest features that are coming out with the React CLI. Um, but for a small project, there's no, there's no reason you should be afraid of ejecting. So we'll just run that command that's built in from the create React app. We'll eject, and we'll need to commit our files first. And there we go. And now we'll eject. Oops. Yes. Oh, I have to commit everything. Oh, we did not want that. <laughs> okay. Uh, you don't want to commit your node modules folder. It looks like node modules went into the wrong folder. And so that's probably because I ran, I was going through this too quickly and put node modules hey, in the wrong Keith. place. Yep. In the meantime, I would like to pass a question from the audience. Okay, yeah, um, sure. They, 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 some, um, Mohammed is, uh, Nick Karsten is asking, no, I'm sorry. Mm, yeah, Karsten is asking that your examples all looks like server side. And what about client side? 
is it does a browser understand TypeScript directly, or does it need to be compiled somehow to run? Right. No, actually, in fact, everything we're doing is entirely client side. So um, if we look at the completed application here, um, this is just a regular um, web browser that you that you would run. Um, everything in the React app compiles down um, into just a set of static files. And that's what you would end up um, deploying. There's nothing. <clears throat> there's nothing in here that's server side. Um, so this is the build folder for the application once it's finished. Uh, it doesn't. Yeah, and you can see everything is just JavaScript. It all gets chunked up and processed. Yeah, more common in the chat, Chris. Uh, Same discussion. It can be added. It needs to be compiled first. Um, we are using <clears throat> we are using TypeScript, which which is not valid JavaScript. It won't be parsed by the browser. So anytime you're you're doing TypeScript development, you will have to run through you will have to run things through a TypeScript compiler. That is true. Um, it's not server side, but it's on in during your local development, <clears throat> the TypeScript compiler strips all the types from from your code and um, you know, outputs valid JavaScript that is ready to just be um, that is ready to just be run on the client. Okay. Okay. Yep. So, are we ready to continue, or do you want to make a short pause? Uh, no, let's let's keep going here. Perfect. Good. Yep. I will remove myself. Okay. So we're trying to run eject. And now we're ejected. We'll have to make those two changes um, that if you go into the React map docs, they do they do at least spell it out for you here, the, the types of changes you need to make. OK. Um, so <clears throat> now that we've ejected, um, if you look at the package JSON for this project, you'll see a whole lot more stuff has been added. You'll also see that you get this config folder, and this has all the hidden configuration that the Create React app automatically added for you. Inside of this big old Webpack config file, um, we need to find two places. One, we need to set up an alias for the Mapbox GL project to use map Libra. Well, we'll just stick that into the right spot. And I actually found that that was not enough to get this working. I also had to ignore some of the Webpack dependencies um, there are there are there is talk about this. Um, typically, Webpack will tell you to exclude its dependency because it has complicated dependencies with web workers. Um, but now that we're using Map Libra, and anyway, it becomes a whole big issue. But all you have to do is add these <laughs> two little lines, and it all works again. Um, where were we? Four nineteen. Okay. And we need to add this to the Babel loader right here. OK, with those two things in place, we should be good to go. <clears throat> we have our basic um, map. Um, but if you tried running it now, it would still fail because we're, we're not presenting the application with um, a valid Mapbox token, um, because it, it, by default, it will try to load Mapbox layers. And so what we need to do is give it a map style that's not dependent on Mapbox. Oops. The, this map style is coming from um, MapTiler. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> MapTiler is um, is a great site. They're they're essentially um, 
giving you a lot of tools um, that are um, making up for the fact that uh, Mapbox is, is no longer open source. They have um, open map tiler. You can create your own vector tile sources, but they also have um, free to use with their token, um, a little bit more generous to um, their, their, um, base their base map layers. And um, we're using this, this dark matter one. Um, here's a funny picture of configuring Webpack. It can be hairy. All right, now that we've got that in place, um, we have the map style. And if we run our application now, we still will not see anything <clears throat> because we've created a map component, but we haven't actually added it into the application yet. We're still just going to get this default application. OK. OK, compiled successfully, yay. OK, so we still have the default application. Now what we need to do is actually use this component that we just built. Our component is called backdrop map. And to add it into our application, we'll remove the header that we got from the auto generation and stick in a backdrop map tag. And that's literally all we need for our application. Why? Backdrop map. Something is messed up. I don't know why I did this quickly, but it will get us through this live demo. OK. Um, no, it won't. Components, backdrop map, backdrop map. What's wrong with that? Uh, let's see. What did I forget? Any other questions while I'm checking my notes here? OK, no more questions for now. Um, I think I'm going to switch out of here for right now um, and go to the demo, which I literally did this morning. Um, and go to the working application, because I do see that we're already halfway through. All right, this is the same. I'm, I'm, I only got about this far, and in, in this, um, and when I did, when I wrote this by hand this morning. Um, oops. Okay. So here now we're back to where we were, and. We have our backdrop map. Um, what I've added, we're going to be we're going to be jumping a, a couple of steps, but basically we have the inter -map, interactive map. We have that map style. We'll stop this for now, and we'll go to the working version. Um, once we get the map up there, we'll start on some of that, um, making some actual components and look at what it's what it, what it looks like to move those components to a library. And then 
um, also using those components in a an official web component. Okay, here we go. Our beautiful map, all working. Um, so we have the interactive map. Um, at this point, I would have added uh, the DECGL um, dependency uh, and the DECGL types, which are which come separately. Um, these are instructions are all in the repo. And um, then in order to add those DECGL layers, literally all we need is this single tag, um, which is this custom React, again, component. This is DECGL. This comes from the DECGL um, library, which we can see here. Here's, here's DECGL. And I'm not doing anything besides basically following these instructions on how to add a DECGL layer. Um, DECGL gives you um, layers um, way beyond what Mapbox gives you built in. So for instance, if you want to add you know, some of these cool hexagon layers, um, they, they are already built in. And basically, all you have to do is pass in the right data. Um, so here's an example. <clears throat> they give you an example of what kind of format the data expects. Um, you pass that data into the layer. There's a couple of options for you know configuring how it thing how it looks, and you literally just add that like we're seeing here. We add this JetGL component, and it's going to then look at whatever layers we're passing in, and it's going to render them. So the layers that we've added, we've added um, this hexagon layer. Um, these data sources are just sample data sources that are coming right out of the DECGL um, repo. So I just picked a couple of thought ones that I thought were cool that aren't actually featured on the website. Um, and that gives us our layers. So now that we have the basic map created, um, it, now I want to get into actually what it looks like to create um, the uh, more more components. So in addition to the, the backdrop map, um, what we're also going to add, uh, hold on just one second, two, okay. Um, we're also gonna add that um, home control component. And this is what it looks like. We have a component, a React component. It is just a function. And here we're getting into some of the, the nitty gritty for how component-driven design um, works. Components are essentially pure functions. They take input, and they give you reliable output back again. In this case, this little home control button, which is, again, this little thing here that lets you go back to a, a known zoom and, and state. Um, this is not a built-in control for the React Map GL. These navigation, um, the zoom buttons, and things like resetting the uh, um, the tilt and stuff like that, or a full screen button, those are built in. Um, but that's all you get basically. And so, if you want some more buttons, we can do that pretty easily. Um, there's nothing special about this. It's got one method. It's called go to home. And it uses a class um, that comes with the React Map GL, which is used for calculating viewport. Um, and what we what we pass into this component is over here. Here we have the Mapbox Home Control. Um, I'm putting in bounds that basically cover the whole world. That give me that gives me a nice world bounds. And what it's taking in as its input is the current viewport, um, which we have up here. Um, the viewport is using um, uh, a type that is exported from the React Map GL. And if we go to look at that viewport, you can just see, oh, you know, here's everything that um, I can pass to my map as parameters for that viewport. And it's really easy in TypeScript just to instantly jump directly to those type definitions so we know 
um, what we're looking at without looking at having to dig into the documentation. In this case, these typings are a little bit out of date, which is not uncommon um, uh, for some libraries still that aren't TypeScript native. Uh, and I'm using a little bit of TypeScript magic just to customize the type. I'm taking out width and height, and I'm putting it back in as a number or a string, and that lets us pass in um, a full screen map for the, for, the, for the viewport. So the control is getting um, these, um, this information about you know, the map, like where, where we are currently. Um, there's, some, there's some attributes that get um, added dynamically once we start using the viewport, like width and height, which it needs to calculate. Um, and then <clears throat> um, and then basically it calls another function that we also pass in from the parent, which is this on viewport change. And now that we've now that now that we've hit the button, we basically want to know what is the new viewport that we'd want to go to, and we calculate it, and then we pass it back up the chain. So uh, in in React, you're basically looking at hierarchies of components where all the custom logic is encapsulated in as small as pieces as possible, so that you can put something together and actually build an application and not go nuts um, working through like spaghetti code of code in all the different places. Um, so that's our that's our working component. Now, right now, this component is defined in our local components folder, um, which if we wanted to use this in, a, in another application, we would have to actually just copy and paste this folder of files to our another application. And that is not what we want to be doing. Um, so. We created our component. Um, I'll show one thing before moving to um, the library and what it looks like for putting these kinds of things in a library. Um, and that's the, the secondary benefit of encapsulating all your code into these reusable components is that you can also be developing these components in isolation. This is called Storybook. Um, it's an app uh, that runs locally alongside your application. It looks at the um, it looks at the code inside your app, and if we run this, let's see here. Uh, no. Um, if we run this, we can see uh, what it looks like in action. But basically, what you're going to see is that <clears throat> um, as we're developing our component here, back in our code, um, the that that whole piece of the application will render right here in this little playground, um, and so that you can be developing your components in isolation. You don't have to wait for the map to reload and re-render. All right, now that now it's running. So there's Storybook. Um, I haven't added icons yet at this stage. Um, and so right now it just says age, but we could change that to say home. And instead of waiting for the map to reload, it just is automatically there. And so this can this can also reduce your development time by letting you <clears throat> look at things in isolation. It'll also give you information about um, all the valid props that your components can accept, and also the actions. Although that didn't show up for me, so I have to look at that's something to follow up on. If people are interested in Storybook, definitely um, talk to me after the talk also. Um, OK, now that we've looked at Storybook, the next step is to see what it looks like to take these components and put them in their own library. Um, and I think I'll just show the documentation real quick here, because we're not going to do all of this. Um, so to move it, to move these components to a reusable library, um, we basically just need to create a new application, uh, a blank application. We'll copy that code into the application. We'll set up TypeScript. Um, we'll add a TS config JSON, which is something we got automatically from create react app. There's a lot of, um, examples out there. It's not, it's not something too hard. Um, we will need to add the React dependencies. Um, and I'm also using 
um, material um, design in these uh, to create things like the side side nav. Um, material um, UI is the sort of default library, uh, is becoming the sort of de facto library for um, reusable components um, in React. Uh, it makes it so that my work of adding something like a drawer from the side is basically as easy as copying this part of, of the things, right? Like we just want a drawer in our app and I just need to copy it from their doc site and stick it into my application. And away we go, we have a drawer. Um, let's see here, let me go back. So I've already, I've already done this. Um, this is this is basically the library app now. Um, we have still have the same um, control here uh, that we were working on earlier. The um, the home control. Um, nothing's really changed. What's the only difference is is that there's no create React app here and there's no Webpack. Um, we're doing the <clears throat> the um, transpiling technically of the TypeScript. Um, directly to JavaScript, just using the TypeScript compiler, um, which is which is TSC. Um, I set up a basic watch command with Nodemon that just runs every time there's file changes in my library. And basically all it does is compile the files and um, copies over the CSS. And that creates our little library. Um, here are our components, and here's what they look like. Uh, not that one. Here's what they look like um, compiled to standard JavaScript, right? So we ha we've removed all the types. Um, I'm compiling here just to ES6. I'm not targeting outdated browsers with ES5. Um, so there's actually not that much difference um, when you when you remove the TypeScript. These files are directly usable um, in our application, and in fact, um, if we go here. Um, this this uh, version of our app, which we were running just a minute ago, doesn't actually have those components locally. Instead, um, um, it just has them as a package dependency. Um, I, I um, committed those um, library files to their own repo. It's rmgl. R, uh, oh, I didn't add it to this one. Um, so you can see in here, when you're when you're developing, here's the package that we made from the library. When you're developing locally, you don't want to have to push your um, your code directly to npm and then pull it back every time you make a change. So instead, um, uh, npm gives you the ability to link um, libraries directly from your file system. And so here we're just looking um, like a level up and um, pulling in our code from our local application. And, and that works really well during development. All right. Um, that That is basically um, most of what we need to go over in terms of creating a library. Um, when you're ready to publish and you want to share your library either with the world or with um, your colleagues, we would log into npm, hit publish, and because we've created a package file um, that uh, basically has this extra method, which says, oh, where do I get these dependencies from when I'm looking for this? Um, anybody can go and then npm install this file, uh, this this set of library, you know, set of files, set of components, and use it in their own React application. Um, the the last step in this this long long road towards making our development you know faster and more sane um, is we're 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 creating reusable components we're we're moving things to libraries so that we can take those libraries of components and and automatically start using them with other applications but what about if we want to use our components and a blank each uh, in a blank like web page that isn't using React and we don't have all this stuff. Well, that we can also do as well. Um, if you've if you've ever um, 
if you've ever done development in HTML and, you know, been sort of happy that, you know, adding an image is essentially as easy as, you know, putting in an image tag and giving it a source, um, everything that we've been doing is essentially modeled after the, the HTML um, element structure, right? But the elements that we've been using in React require all this other overhead for development. And for large applications, that's what we want. We, we want to be doing that probably. But web components allow us to actually package um, what we're working on and let people um, consume them without having to be JavaScript w wizards or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to show quickly the <clears throat> The web components um, page here. Here is a, a library of web components that other people have published. Um, it does look like there's already one for Mapbox GL. And instead of doing all the things we just did and to get a to get our basic map on our web page, just like adding an image tag, you would copy this Mapbox GL tag and you would end up with a Mapbox map on your web page. It's pretty snazzy. Um, there are there are some efforts to try and make it easy to publish web components directly from React. Like there's this library that's kind of acts like a CLI for um, publishing web components. Um, they're all kind of lacking. And honestly, um, I think uh, React and the people behind Create React App, which I think is still just React, I think you know would, it, would, it would do us all a service if they stepped up and made some of these things um, push button. Um, options when building our applications, but um, they don't, and we don't necessarily need them to do it either because web components are just um, standard web technologies. There's nothing beyond HTML and JavaScript that you need to make using custom components. Um, if you go on the Mozilla site, you can pretty much read all you need to know about how to make a web component and what it what defines a web component. And it's basically something that says what's what's the tag name and what information and in, what information am I mounting inside of the tag and what um, properties is it going to get. Um, I started with a medium um, article just to give me like a little bit of a head start. But once I started here, it actually didn't require very much. And I'll go through the different steps of that um, here and the web component. So uh, in order to make the web component, I'm starting with uh, yet another a clean um, application. This is my web component playground, right? Um, and I, again, I, I don't like typing out code, so I just use generator. This is a standard HTML5 boilerplate. Um, it um, automatically produces everything that you see in here, like an index page and a JS folder, everything you need to get started. Um, with just a plain old vanilla, um, you know, web page, um, and the the only um, the only fun thing in here is that it automatically adds parcel, which is a, um, a you know code bundler, um, and and you know built-in server, and so we can use that to actually run the site and see what we get. So I I scaffolded it out uh, just a plain old vanilla site here. We've got an index page um, that we're on here. It's not doing anything uh, that you wouldn't expect to see here, except now we're going to add this layer drawer. Um, the layer drawer we built, and I, I skipped over building it, but um, we is one of our components in our library. It's a React component. It's got some things to say, you know, whether it's open or not. Um, it automatically creates the um, the, the list of layers that we had in here, right? Um, and then puts those, you know, shows or hides those on the on the page. And this is the kind of component that, you know, um, doesn't necessarily need to be used only with this application. You could stick a different map in there or whatever, right? It's a generic component. It knows nothing about Mapbox or Map Libra or anything. It's just a React component that takes in properties. Um, and in this case, um, not those, um, takes in properties, um, which is just a list of layers and what layers active, what layers are active. So if they're checked or not, 
and to let us know like when they change. And so that seems like a good um, candidate for turning into a web component. And here's what that looks like as Hi, a web Chris. component. Is yep. again? Yes. Yep. Yes, I was thinking that um, we have seven minutes to go, so okay. perhaps we can take some time to uh, answer some questions from the audience. Yep, I think I'm I'm pretty much at the end here. Um, let me just run this oh, yeah. web component, yeah. and um, that'll be good. So, um, in this case, we're extending just the HTML element, right? This is the default constructor for web components. We need to create a div to mount our application into. Um, we're going to, we're going, um, there's two, there's two important functions or um, yeah, there's two important functions that get called for us automatically. This connected callback is, is called whenever this element is added to the page. And we're literally just gonna render our React component into our div. And we also need to re-render our React component when one of the attributes has changed. So if we go back and look, we can pass in attributes kind of like we did in React, except that we only have access to string attributes here. So we are gonna have to parse any JSON um, that we get in our application. Um, but that's that's basically it. And um, this is actually the, this is actually um, the running um, parcel website. And you can see that, uh, this is what it looks like when we add our layer drawer. It just looks like any other HTML tag. I don't know if people can see that. Um, it's just our it's just our layer drawer, and it and it works. Um, we don't have any um, we don't have a map or anything anymore. We're just loading this single component into a web page. But you didn't you once we once we've um, published our web component, somebody can add it simply by um, there's one part simply by um, running this file. And at the very bottom here is where the magic happens and it defines the layer drawer component so that we can use it directly in HTML. All right, that was a lot. <laughs> um, I can stop there and, and deal with any questions. Thank you. Uh, it's been really exciting and super cool maps. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there was some time in the setting environment. So the first, uh, I posted the first question in the chat, uh, asking for an API recommendation for custom tile vector from GeoJSON or MD tiles, excluding Max Book Studio, PostGIS, or GeoServer. Which would be your recommendation for this case? Um. Let's see. I'm not sure I understand the question. They want they want custom um, vector tiles, but they don't want to host them out on Mapbox. They don't want to be dynamically generating them through PostGIS or through GeoServer. Yeah. Like where where does. where do they want to get them from? <laughs> <laughs> um, Perhaps we can we can ask uh, the person in there that can clarify. Yeah, typically um, for the applications that I'm developing, either if somebody's paying for Mapbox, Mapbox is hosting them, or we're we're hosting them out of a Postgres instance we have running in um, AWS on on EC2. Um, for the second question, is the web component lazily loaded by default? Um, I'm not using suspense. You you definitely could use um, lazy loading for any React component. Um, the and as long as you're not having to do like server side rendering, you can get away with just suspense. Um, and I don't know what the last question means, <laughs> but I think we're. Uh, this question about the create a, a library creating a control. guide yeah. yeah perhaps i was also thinking um because this this uh, 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 life coding was uh, really interesting for me so i i can imagine that other peers other people that are not so experienced like you perhaps could be interested if you can recommend some resources or where to start 
it seems that the learning curve is not that uh, flat. So <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah. I mean, this this is definitely like you know there you uh, there's no getting around the buy-in into learning React here. So you know if you want to um, take advantage of the sort of component-driven design um, approach, you know you're you're gonna end up picking React or or Vue or Angular. Um, some people are creating web components um, without those, without those frameworks, of course. Um, but the frameworks just give you so much help for building, you know, large applications um, that I would probably recommend learning one of those. React is currently the leader. I like Angular personally. I've done Vue too. They're pretty much all the same once you get to learn them. Um, and you need a you you, you definitely need to um, have a basic grasp of React and JavaScript um, before embarking on um, the things that we're showing in here on the demo. Yes, I'm also a more Angular person. A final question, Chris, um, is in the chat. If uh, there is directly injection a compiled web component into the React application. Um, yeah, the for for the web component, we are um, we are adding in our layer drawer as a compiled ES6 class from our um, from our component library. Um, we also are having to install the dependencies, but then we're basically using React to render that component inside the web component. And so you would you would actually give somebody this file, so they wouldn't have to know anything about what you're doing. They could just stick this file in their page, um, make sure it's running, and then that gives them access to using the custom tag anywhere in their HTML file. Great. Yep. Okay. Uh, with this uh, final question and the many thanks from the audience, uh, I will just to say thanks again for, for this um, useful, interesting live coding session. And yeah, uh, we also have your contact to follow you. So it was great. Thank you.